Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the California Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, maximizing your education benefits. Um, my name is Jennifer Rudquist. Um, before we begin, as a disclaimer, we'd like to bring to your attention that this webinar is being recorded. And by logging on, you're agreeing to be a part of our recording. Um, the recording is going to be available on our website and also our YouTube channel so that you can watch it and you can share it with others um, that may benefit from the information presented. Um, again, my name is Jennifer Lint, uh, Redquist, and I'm proud to say I am a CalTAP training coordinator with CalVet. Um, my background includes being an Air Force brat, being an Air Force veteran, being a um, retired military spouse, and the mother of three active duty airmen. Uh, with that being said, I understand the hardships that you guys have all had to endure to ensure our country's freedom. So I want to say thank you to all of the veterans, military members, spouses, children, friends, and family for all that you guys do. Uniformed or not, we understand that you all served and CalVet and all the organizations here today really are passionate about getting resources to you, cradle to grave. So if you have any questions at all, please use the contact slide at the end of this presentation and give us a call. Let's get started. I'm excited you guys joined today's presentation because it's packed with great information and resources that I know is going to make a huge impact on your lives. In addition to myself, Sheree Nunez is also here. She's going to be in the chat putting in all sorts of resources and links to uh, affiliated with all the different information given in this presentation. In addition to that, she'll be also in the Q&A section. That's where we ask that you guys put, hi, Sheree. <laughs> That's where we ask that you guys put all your questions in. She's going to um, actually answer those questions either right away or she'll wait for those to be at the uh, or she'll wait to answer them at the end of the presentation where we'll all go over them together because most likely if you have that question, somebody else also has that question. So everybody can hear the answers to those questions. All right. Um, if for any reason and that you need to leave. If there's an emergency, please don't worry. Leave your computer right away. Stop what you're doing. Um, come back if you can. If you cannot come back, don't worry. This is being recorded. Like I said, it's going to be on our CalVet website. Um, and Sheree's going to put that in the, uh, in the chat. All right, let's get started with a CalTAP overview. This is just meant to give you a snapshot of the benefits and resources available to you and your family in the state of California. The goal is to get your feet wet the, with the benefits and acquainted with the benefits, where they are, where to go to get them, where to get help to get that started. So what is CalTAP? You've heard me say CalTAP several times now. CalTAP um, me, uh, stands for the California Department, I mean, California Transitions Assistance Program. So it was designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned federal and state benefits, as well as provide continuing support um, and assistance as their needs change over time through five different pathways. We want to read that verbatim because we want you to know that we understand that your needs are going to change over time. The things that you need today, you may not need tomorrow. The things that you need tomorrow, you probably didn't need today. So we want to be there for you, not only today, but for the rest of your lives and your family lives. So we want to give you 20, one way we do that is we have this online learning portal. And this is fantastic. You can go to this, our website, CalTap or calvet.ca.gov. And um, uh, she's going to put that in the, in the chat. Um, and we have a, that learning portal where at any time you can go through core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and service providers. So each one, service providers is meant for those that work with veterans and their families. It's kind of like a cultural competency um, pathway. So we want you guys to be able to 24 seven, be able to get access to these type, these different resources and such. And we do that through this learning portal. So here is our veterans resource book. It is like gold, you guys. All your benefits are in one place for the state and some of your federal benefits are also in here. A lot of your federal benefits actually. Please download this. Uh, Sheree's gonna put it in the chat, but if you don't, um, not able to catch it today, I'm gonna show you another place where you can find it and you can share it at any time. Here is our website. This is uh, 
it's such a user-friendly website. Um, do not be afraid of rabbit holes in this website because those rabbit holes lead to carrots. Carrots are money in your pocket and your family's pocket. Everything is just click, 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 click. If you want to learn about education, it's a click away. If you want to learn about healthcare, it's a click away. Um, everything and anything is there. We have circled right now, CalTAP. That is where that learning portal is, where I was talking to you about earlier. And then if you go down the page a little bit more, you're going to see where it says publications. Under there, the resource book click, the resource link is right there. The resource book link is there. So if you want to get that resource book, it's always going to be on our website down at the bottom of our main page. So let's click into that CalTAP portal. Here's a CalTAP portal with those five different pathways. And we have a uh, core curriculum circled right now. So let's start there. It's a nice general place to start and we'll explore there. Here's the different modules, um, just like all the other pathways, they have modules in them. And those modules are specific to what you're wanting to learn about. Um, this one has medical resiliency. Uh, it has financial literacy. Um, it has claims and compensation. And what we have circled there is California benefits. So the main California benefits that CalVet offers. All right, what are those benefits? So here's the first set of benefits here. We have the college tuition fee waiver, which we're gonna go into in depth later on in this presentation. It is gonna waive the tuition and fees at any state funded schools for dependents of veterans. Um, and we'll talk more about the specifics of that. Uh, the next thing is the veterans destination or license. This is very, very cool. You can now get the word veteran put on your driver's license. This is really a great, great benefit because before we had this, when you were going around town getting those discounts at Home Depot, or maybe it was Veterans Day and you want to get that free coffee, you had to show some type of proof of being a veteran. Um, some people are retired, so they have an ID, but those of us are, that are not retired or those of us that don't have a health care card or don't have proof that way, we use our DD Form 214. And that has your social security card and it's got a lot of private information on it. And not to mention, most people don't know how to read one of those. So now you can take that DD form 214 to your local county veteran service office. They're gonna verify, yes, indeed, you are a veteran and they're gonna give you a form to take to DMV. And DMV is gonna put the word veteran on your license. It's that easy. The next thing is motor vehicle registration fee waiver. This is gonna waive the registration of one of your vehicles if you are a veteran with a disability from the federal VA that interferes with your mobility and you are 100% rated. And it's going to waive that re registration fee of one of your vehicles. It's a great, great benefit. California specific benefits continuing on. Um, fishing, they have, we also have reduced fishing and hunting license in the state of California. And you're going to go to wildlife.ca.gov. That's where you get your licenses usually. You're going to go there and you'll just go to um, discounted uh, discounted licenses. And one of the, one of the, uh, One of the drop down menu will say veteran on there. And uh, if you're 50%, you can apply for that right online. The next thing is the no cost of state park pass. You can go to parks.ca.gov, and Sheree's going to put that also in the uh, chat for you guys. That's if you're 50% rated or higher, and you can apply for that online and you send it into um, parks.ca.gov. The next is a disabled veteran property tax exemption. This is an exempt up to $150,000 of your property taxes. <coughs> so for instance, you have a house that is being assessed at $500,000. You're 100% rated. You're going to be actually assessed on $350,000. It's about $1,700 a year in savings every year. And it just automatically renews once you apply for it the first time at your county assessor's office. That's where you pay your taxes. The last thing here we have business this license tax and fee exemptions. This is fantastic. Just go to the place where you pay your taxes, show them your DD form 214, show them your license, show them your, uh, your letter from the federal VA that says you're disabled and ask them what kind of uh, exemptions are open for you. And these are all of our fantastic divisions within a CalVet. We have veteran services, which is the one of the uh, is the division that I'm in. We have home loans. Home loans is fantastic. It's a little bit different from the federal VA loan. The federal VA loan is a guarantee. CalVet home loans actually originates, process, close, and for the life of the loan, CalVet is going to service your loan. The best thing about CalVet home loans is that we are not commission-based. We want to get California veterans and their families 
into homes. The ne uh, next two divisions here, we have women, uh, women's Women Veterans Division, and we have a Minorities Unrepresented uh, Veterans Divisions. These divisions are outreach and advocacy for those specific demographics. Um, they have all sorts of really great benefits. Um, they have really great resources for uh, those people, uh, those demographics. Um, another awesome thing that minorities and underrepresented, uh, underrepresented veterans do, they also help with those that are um, not, uh, that need assistance with national uh, um, with uh, I'm sorry, I've drawn blank. Okay, let's just move on. Let's move on. Homes for long term care. These are fantastic. These are long term care home facilities in the state of California for uh, veterans to live out the rest of their lives. They are fantastic facilities. They're income-based and they're based um, on the level of care that you need. They have medical, dental, um, uh, all sorts of different outlets um, and all sorts of great things that are there and um, offer a really great place for veterans to live out the rest of their lives with their comrades and just really have a great life. Um, the last thing is cemeteries. Um, we have three state cemeteries in the state of California that we service, um, and uh, you can go onto our website under CalVet, CalVet Programs, and it'll be there that you can see which cemeteries are serviced by the CalVet. Now, I've given you a lot of information. It's kind of overwhelming, but I want you to know that CalVet and CalTAP, all of us here um, at the California Department of Veterans Affairs, are really passionate about getting service to you today, tomorrow, and forever. And the really great way we can do that is if you provide your non-DOD email to caltap at calvet.ca.gov. You will not be spammed. Do not worry about that at all. We're going to send you a monthly newsletter that tells you about any upcoming um, benefits that are out there, um, changes to benefits, um, uh, different things that are going on around the state that um, can improve your lives. So it's just once a month, you'll get one of those. And also it has all the upcoming webinars for the, for the next month. You can register for My CalVet on our CalVet website. Um, you can also join our, uh, our social medias. They're really great. It's a really great way to get information um, from, our YouTube, from YouTube, from um, Facebook, Instagram. All those are really, really great. Um, the YouTube channel, just go to YouTube and you can use your phone right now and scan it right now, or you can go to YouTube and just type in CalVet um, and it'll pop up with our YouTube. So this webinar, along with so many more webinars are there and they're separated in playlists for whatever subject that you wanna learn more about. And attend our webinars if you can, um, and then fill out today's survey. We actually do, we really, really use these surveys. We do not want to put out information that is obsolete or information you don't need or information overload. We wanna give you exactly what you want when you need it. So let us know how we're doing. Tell us if we're doing something right. Tell us if uh, there's something we can improve on. Tell us if there's something we, we haven't presented on that you want us to present on. Um, we definitely look at those and we definitely implement all the things that are in there. Here's the My CalVet website right here, or CalVet website, and it's circled how to register on the website. And here's that newsletter that I was telling you about. Very basic, very easy. You'll get it once, once a month um, in your email. And here is a really great website. This is not a CalVet website. This is cal, uh, va.gov. This is kind of a nice hub that we think that you should really take advantage of and use. Um, you can check on your uh, benefits, you can check on healthcare, you can check on your education benefits, all sorts of great things that are in here. And just use that search bar anytime um, at the top right there um, next to where we said sign in. Um, signing in, you'll need a DS login. Once you establish your DS login, write it down uh, for yourself and then put it somewhere where your family knows where it's at. If something were ever to happen to a vet, a veteran and you needed to get different benefit letters, you can download those benefit letters right here so that those, so that the veteran can get those, the, the benefits that they need in order to, um, if they're in a home or if they're in a hospital or whatever it may be, or the benefit letters are there for the dependents so they can uh, take care of or have benefits. Um, that they would need and uh, after the veteran is gone. Here's my information here. Please, please email me if you have any questions at all. Um, we can set up a time to talk over the phone 
or any way you want to do it. Um, and I can explain any and all of these benefits, benefits step by step. With that, I'm going to hand the floor over. Oh, actually, no. Usually we have a local interagency network coordinator here, but all of our coordinators are very, very busy due to the floods, um, the national. Uh, so they are all working in the disaster relief centers. So they're very, very busy, but I'm going to cover all this information for you. So we have eight different um local interagency network coordinators. They work closely with the local community uh, and they assist veterans in those communities. They serve those veterans, they're advocates in those specific areas. They have such a dynamic role um, with both um, between the state, the federal, local, they know all, all the benefits right that, then and there for you. They can bridge the gap between CalVet and the federal government, state, non-governmental agencies. Um, California has over 2 million veterans. So there's a lot of us out there. So these links are out there, boots on the ground, helping you out and finding a, and being an advocate and learning about different things that are going on in those regions. You can see they're split up by region there. At the uh, a little few more slides, I'm going to have all the links, um, emails on there. But you can see like a Bay Area, uh, a, a, a link that's in the Bay Area is BA is Bay, Bay, uh, Bay Area, and then it's LINC, um, Oceanside or would or Orange County would be OC. Um, Northern California to be NV Northern Valley link. So anyways, that's how you get a hold of them. If not, if you're having a difficult time, you want more assistance, I can help you with that also. So they provide outreach um, to service members, veterans, and their families. They make referrals directly with service providers, whether it doesn't matter if they're uh, governmental or their nonprofit or whatever they are, they help network with uh, those agencies. Um, they also assist with the local emergencies. So they're at the disaster relief center. So what happens when there's a there's a disaster in the state of California, like fires or like these floods that happen? A lot of people are displaced or a lot of people um, have debris that they need help with or they have holes in their um, roof or they have lots of major damage. They're going to need a lot of assistance. So these disaster, disaster relief centers are in the counties that were affected, and what happens is is there's state there's all there's a lot of state agencies there to assist with. Um, the SBA is there, FEMA is there, CalVet is there, Department of Insurance is there, um, DMV is in there. So if you lost your your driver's license registration, they can assist you with that. So there's a lot of different agencies that are there, and. Calvet, you, most of the time, Calvet links are there. If they're not there, if it's not them, it's us, um, the training coordinators. So if you are affected by these floods or for future reference, or you know somebody who was, talk to them about the disaster relief centers. You can go onto Cal OES's website to find out where those disaster relief centers are. And they provide leadership and advocacy out to local communities. So this is right here, how you connect they how they connect you to benefits. They can help you connect with the EDDs, um, the American Job Centers, the state benefits. They can assist you and help you to connect with the county veteran service office in your area. Um, and uh, they can also help with uh, navigating the healthcare system in your area. So this, as I said, is gonna you can take a actually take a picture of this screen right here. This has all of their contact information. Those are our CalVets um, representatives in your local area. So you can give them an e send them an email and say, you need assistance with housing, you need assistance with food, you need assistance, whatever it may be, employment, let them know that, uh, send them an email, let them know you need their assistance and they will gladly give you a call, gladly email you back and direct you in all the right places. All right. And again, right there, we have all of our um, QR codes. And the last thing I wanna to bring to your attention on this, on a lot of these contact slides is the Veterans Crisis Line. The Veterans Crisis Line used to be a longer phone number and has changed now to 988. 988 is, um, is not only for veterans, but 988 is used for anybody who is in crisis. So if you know, if, if something is happening and you're worried about yourself, 
um, or you're worried about um, somebody close to you and they're in, in, in crisis, please call 988. And if it's a veteran, press one. There's specific uh, counselors that assist with uh, veterans in crisis, and that's press one. So remember, 988, it's like 911, but 988, that's all it is, and then press one for um, veterans in crisis. All right, let's go, get, go on to our education pathway now. So our education pathway uh, is in that CalTAP portal right there. And once you open it, you have all these different modules. These modules are going to go over uh, education benefits, types of schools in the state of California, how to select a school, um, and all sorts of great, great information about benefits and resources. So let's start talking about education benefits. Let's start with ch uh, chapter 3033 and forever GI Bill, That's that, uh, that is that 36 months of benefits um, and can be up to 48 months in combination with chapter 31 V, R, and E. There has been a little bit of changes, so you can get up to 84 months, but I'll tell you about that later. But at the minimum, if you use both of those, pro both those uh, programs, it's 48 months with both of those. The forever GI Bill, Bill, that ends that 15 year limit on the GI Bill usage. Those of us who got out earlier in the earlier, we had the Montgomery GI Bill. We had 15 years to use that. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. I left nine months on the table myself because I was just busy. I was busy uh, getting jobs, starting my family, and things like that. And sometimes you, you don't have time to use those, you know, then uh, before that 15 years. So it's so great that now the forever GI Bill extends it to forever. You can use it at any time that you're ready. Um, actually, I want to be using it next month. I'm starting school next month. I'm really, really excited about, um, and I'm using the GI Bill from my husband. My husband has transferred his benefits to me. So um, it provides full GI Bill benefit uh, to Purple Heart recipients, regardless of length, and restores GI Bill benefits if the student experienced permanent closures from the schools. So if your school closed and your diploma um, is not worth anything, they'll restore all of your benefit. You can get all of those months restored and you can go and um, get, your, uh, get your degree. Um, Forever GI Bill also increases payments. Back in the day, it was only like seven hundred dollars. Now it's that BAH is that pay, the BAH in that area that you're going to school is going to be your payments. It's really great, um, and 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 applies to veterans with less than twelve months of active service. So, and it also expands benefits for those that are pursuing their STEM degrees at science, technology, engineering, mathematical programs. Those take a little bit longer. You have a lot more prerequisites. So they expand 12 more months for those, uh, those great degrees, those pretty hard degrees. Now, I always put this and I always talk about this. Please reach out to 888-GI-BILL-1 if you have any questions about your benefits. These guys are fantastic. They can tell you exactly how many benefits you have. They can You can tell them about what you want to do um, and they can uh, let you know if uh, you're able to transfer, you're able to do whatever it is that you want to do on um, you know, how the GI Bill will support you in those um, decisions. So here's a GI Bill comparison tool. It's fantastic. Go to va.gov, or you can just go into Google and type in GI Bill comparison tool, and it's going to pop up. This is fantastic. You can compare your schools, find out how each one of them is going to pay for BAH, find out if that school is covered by GI Bill, find out how much the book stipend is, and can just compare schools. It's fantastic. So I've compared three different schools right here in, this, um, in the Sacramento area. That's where our headquarters is, um, and I had to pick up a pick an area. So right here, I picked a university, I picked uh, a, um, a community college, and I also picked a uh, a private school. So you can see right here, and I circled right here what GI Bill pays for those schools. Um, and as you can see, all three of these are covered, but some private school, as you can see. Phoenix is much more expensive than the rest of the schools. Now, sometimes these private schools do not match, um, but it looks like this school is participating. If you look farther down the page, it's not on here. They participate in the Yellow Ribbon Program. So Yellow Ribbon Program is, a, is, is an agreement between the school and the GI Bill that they meet in the middle to cover all of that tuition. So it's really great if you wanna to go to a private school to use this GI Bill comparison tool, see if there's any 
type of warnings or cautionary. If there's anything that's going on with the school, it'll be on this comparison tool. And I'll tell you if it's completely covered or part of it's not covered um, and if they participate in the yellow ribbon program. So here's the cost of attendance right here. As you can see, it's pretty expensive to go to school. Um, the least expensive is about $28,000. This includes uh, tuition, room and board, books, transportation, just personal expenses. But school can go all the way up to $37,000 a year um, at those public schools. And this is for residents and of undergrad, uh, undergraduates. So uh, we're going over that STEM degree. Um, the STEM degree is additional nine months of post 9-11 benefits to help you. Um, you have a priority entitlement to those that are 100% post 9-11, um, but it cannot be matched with the yellow ribbon program that I was talking to you about before. So if you want to go to private school, they're not going to, they're not going to match that yellow ribbon. Um, and it's not the stem to, stems are not transferable to dependents. So this is a dependent program. It's the chapter 35 survivor dependents educational assistance program. It is fantastic. It offers dependents up to 45 months of education benefits. Eligibility is that you have to be uh, the dependent has to be um, a head of a veteran that is 100% service connected, permanent and total, um, or ha have died while on active duty as a result of the service connected disability. Um, to apply for uh, Chapter 35, you're going to go to uh, VA, the VA.gov, and the form is 22-5490. You can also go to VA.gov and learn more about this program. It's fantastic. Um, it's going to pay about, I think right now it's up to, you can see on there also, it's about $1,200. It pays like the GI Bill. It'll pay you $1,200 per month. It does not cover, it won't give you a book stipend. It doesn't cover tuition. That'll come out of pocket. But this is a really great program. It's, and like I said, if you're full-time, it's like, I think, I think about $1,200 per month that you'll get while you're going to school. College tuition fee waiver for veterans dependents. Remember I told you about this earlier? This is a CalVet program. This is fantastic. This this program is gonna waive the tuition at any state funded school in the state of California for dependents of veterans with a rating of zero and above. Now, when I say I, when I say any schools in the state, public schools, I mean community colleges, states, universities, all that through your doctorate degree. There is no time limit in plan B of this. You can, I am a dependent of a veteran with a disability rating um, and I can still use this vet at 40, 45 years old, I can still use this program. It is fantastic. Um, in plan A, there is an age restriction of the, um, the child cannot be over the age of 26 um, and spouses can use plan A. Plan B, um, only the children can use this um, and there's no age restriction. There is though a restriction on, or there is um, eligibility requirements for uh, that they can, the student may not make more than the national poverty income limit. And I think I saw the other day, um, right now it's 15,555 5, 15, or something like that. It was something close to that. So just to be safe, um, make sure that your, I would say, make sure that your student doesn't make more than $12,000 a year on their taxes. Um, and uh, then you'll have a nice little cushion there because if you're even one dollar over, you're not. They're not going to qualify for the program. So yeah, this is fantastic. And only the dependents have to be residents of the state of California. So veterans readiness employment chapter thirty one. We talked a little bit about this when we were talking about the GI Bill. VRNE assist entitled veterans with service connected abilities um an employment handicap to prepare and obtain and maintain a job so this program um it pays like the gi bill um so you'll get a stipend the bh stipend and they're going to cover the books and they're going to cover the tuition just like the gi bill but in addition to that this this program is going to help the veteran to go to school so they can help with obtaining a computer or whatever type of resources they need. Um, this program is for those that are um, have a disability rating um, that are 20% or higher. And this is just so that they can basically cross train into a profession that they can be successful in. I'm sorry, 10% or higher. So um, to apply for this, I'm gonna go to the next slide. To apply for this, um, 
it here, I'm sorry, there's continuation right here. We, they also do twist, uh, um, they do tutoring assistance. They help with seeking, looking for jobs. They do adjustment counseling, um, all sorts of great stuff. Also medical and dental referrals for VA healthcare. So here's how to apply. I'm sorry, I skipped a step there. <laughs> um, you're just going to go to va.gov and send your completed application to the intake center right here. But if you have any questions about this program, you can call 800-698-212411, I'm sorry, and it's option Five. Now, the great thing about VNRE is that in April of 2021, they changed it before the maximum amount of months that you could get combining your uh, GI Bill and VRNE was 48 months. N April of 21, uh, April 2021, they changed that. Now you can use, if you use your VRNE before you use your GI Bill, they can combine the 48 months and the 36 months. So you can get a, it is possible to get an, a, a total of 84 months of benefits, but you have to use VRNE first and then use your GI Bill. If you use your GI Bill first and you use a couple months, it's not a big deal. You can still use both programs, but they're gonna, it's, they're going to, um, it's gonna take away from the total. So if you use two months, instead of having 84 months co uh, combined benefits, you'll have 82 months. So. Suri's going to put in the chat, there's an article on how it works. So you can read more about it. Um, or you can just Google uh, using GI Bill with chapter 31. Um, and you can learn all about how you can maximize those benefits, those two different programs together. Utilizing, uh, utilizing your benefits, it takes 120 minimum to get your bachelor's degree. Um, that doesn't include those prerequisites and remedial classes. So if you're enrolled and you don't need any of those classes and you are full-time um, for fall and spring, chapter 33 is only going to cover up to 116. So you're still going to be short four units, even if you've done everything, everything right and you've done all those remedial classes and you're good to go. So we've got some tips and tricks to overcome the shortage in the units. Um, so the first thing you can do is take more than 12 units. If you do that, the GI Bill is still going to pay you the full tuition, um, still cover the full tuition and pay you the, the, the BAH, the full BAH. It's going to lead to fulfilling your graduation requirements one semester earlier in, the, in this example. Consider certifying at three quarters time. That's also a really, really great idea. So you can, when you do that, you'll get paid. Um, if you certify at three quarters time, you're actually taking all the classes. You can extend that GI Bill benefit from 36 to 45 months. Um, the BAH is only gonna be paid at the three quarter time and you're gonna have to pay for the extra tuition of those classes that are not, that, are, that you're not claiming. Um, but, the, but you can use the California Promise or you can use scholarships or there's lots of other ways to um, make up that quarter time. So another great thing is participate in work studies. Work studies are really great. You can work at any um, VA or veteran military um, type agencies like CalVet, like the County Veteran Service Office. Maybe you're working at the Veteran Resource Center on campus. You're going to be doing federal and state minimum, you're going to be getting paid federal and state minimum wage to perform VA related duties. But the greatest thing about this is that when you're enrolled in this program, that they're going to work around your school schedule. They're very flexible and it's going to offset the cost of attendance. So maybe that other quarter time. Um, and then also remember that BAH is not paid in between semesters and quarters. So in the summertime or when you're not going to school or like that month and a half that you're off during the winter time, you're not gonna get paid your BAH during that time. So withdraw versus an F. So withdraw is not gonna affect your GPA, but it's gonna affect your stipend if you don't replace it. An F is not gonna affect that a stipend, but it is going to affect that GPA and the number of months that you have re uh, remaining. So if it's, it's up, to, it's up to you and your family to decide which um, is best for you guys when you are up against this. So just think about, uh, you know, and do the pros and cons of sticking through a class um, or withdrawing from the class. 
Um, financial assistance, um, we highly recommend, even if you don't think that you qualify for anything, always do financial aid. You'd never know. Um, financial aid is going to open you up to scholarships, grants, all sorts of other things. Um, or you might actually qualify for some other things, um, some financial aid. Uh, California Promise, it'll automate when you do the FAFSA, it'll autom you'll automatically be applying for the California Promise I to told you about earlier today. Um, apply for scholarships as much as you can. Um, and then find out if, you're, if your school uh, participates in the Yellow Ribbon Program, if you have one of those private schools. This is scholarship. It's another great way to save money um, for your uh, dependents going to school. Um, the, here's a, I'm not an expert on this, but we have their phone number and we have the contact for the scholarship 529. You can invest as little or as much as you want, as aggressive or as, um, uh, as less aggressive as you would like. So there's my information again. Um, please send me an email if you have any questions. Again, I'm going to point out that 988 number at the bottom. And then the 800 number, that number goes to all of us training coordinators and also goes to the link. So when you call that number, we're going to be the ones answering the phone calls and we're the ones that are going to be assisting you. So please give us a call um, if you have any questions or need any type of assistance or share that phone number with somebody, uh, with whoever you think that needs that. All right, with that, I'm finally, I'm going to give the floor over to Todd. Todd is from D Diablo Valley College. He's a veterans um, counselor. He is fantastic, and he's going to tell you all about higher education. Are you there, Todd? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. Let me, uh says I cannot start video because the host has stopped it. Okay. So, so you don't need my video. The yeah, see sure. my lovely mug. as long as the, everybody can see the uh, screen of higher education, right? Okay. Yeah, I think Sheree just I think Sheree just allowed uh, gave you those capabilities. Try one more time, okay. and if it doesn't work, we'll just move on. If not, as long as we can see, as long as the, the audience can see this presentation, right? And Absolutely. you can hear me clearly. That's the most important. So, um, I guess I'll ask you just to click forward, right? Because I don't have control of that. Okay. So yeah, I as mentioned, and I'm grateful to be here. Uh, Todd Steffen, I'm now the counselor at Diablo Valley College in Pleasant Hill. Uh, before that, 18 years at Las Positas College and, and uh, very involved in their veterans program as their supervisor and certifying official. But anyways, I have the opportunity to talk about uh, higher education. And if you're familiar with the uh, California Community College, public system and I'm going to go over kind of the structure of it and then the level as you see on the slide right now the level of degrees you know uh, a few years back it definitely correlated with the amount of income right and it still does mo in most areas um, but I do want to as a counselor I do want to add that you know certificates and associates I think sometimes we look and like oh those are only two-year degrees in, in our system at the community colleges uh, that offer associate's degrees, there's a lot of opportunities and careers tied to them, uh, such as mechanical engineering, technicians, uh, nurses, I mean, just a lot of them. But obviously in different areas, we have the levels, the highest is the doctoral degree. Um, next slide, please. So in California, largest system community colleges, I mean, if you're where you're at, if you throw a rock, you will probably hit a community college. There's 116 of them, and uh, and there's 15 currently offering bachelor's degrees, which is kind of new. Community colleges in the past uh, would offer certificates and associate degrees, or a lot of times individuals say two-year degrees, or associate transfer degrees. Um, but you can see the map of California. Uh, if you're looking, at it, it's a great uh, program, or the community college is a great system, very affordable, $46 a unit. Uh, as mentioned, dependents can be uh, veterans. A lot of times won't have to pay any fees, veterans getting post 9 11 and all that stuff. The next slide, please. Then we have our state system, California State Universities, 23 campuses. In quite a few of them, and they range, you know, um, uh, some of them have areas of nursing programs, teaching credentials, primarily bachelor's and master's programs, um, and you can see on the map uh, all the way up to 
I think I can't see it, but uh, Humboldt all the way down to San Diego. Uh, each campus, uh, I've been to quite a few of them, just like our community colleges have, uh, uh, they're all tied together, but they're also very unique in their environment and their culture too. So next slide. And then the UCs. I'm actually at an institution that's kind of between two, uh, UC Davis and UC Berkeley. We get a lot of students that choose those. But the UC system, uh, and there's nine of them that are undergraduate. There's one that's a graduate only, which is uh, UC San Fran. Um, and you can see they also offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. So why we and I know quite a few individuals are familiar to the UCs because of whether athletic programs that they have, such as Berkeley and UCLA, and then as well as some amazing uh, campuses in the state. Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, it really correlates with uh, wages and also unemployment, the higher the degree. But I do want to add, you know, in this uh, economy that's really been changing, uh, those who are, it'll be interesting to see some of the trends uh, it'll still be probably a similar graph, but some of the trends with certificates and associate degrees, because employers want that uh, some of those skills that are directly related to what they're hiring for. And as I mentioned, like engineer, mechanical engineer technicians, as an example, or iron workers, or even nurses. So next slide. Uh, why community colleges? I mentioned a little bit earlier. It's affordable, but the lowest in the nation, $46 a unit. Uh, uh, they offer the California College Promise. So regardless if you're utilizing VA benefits or the CalVet fee waiver, a lot of students qualify to have uh, free tuition. Uh, we have the certificates, as I mentioned, and then the partnerships, the collaboration with the UCs and the CSUs. So uh, direct transfer, a lot of times individuals that might have tried to get in from high school, they had to compete and could not. If they go to a community college, they can go into a guaranteed transfer program for many of our UCs, and as well as uh, just a tag program um, transfer agreement, and then the CSUs as well with our associate transfers. Next slide. Uh, Veterans Resource Centers, you know, the community college and the CSUs and UCs, but definitely I know firsthand from the community colleges, majority have vet centers on their campuses. Uh, they range in sizes and staffing, but the purpose is really for most of them to have a one-stop uh, uh, area where you may have your certifying official for VA benefits, your veterans counselor, coordinator, or a place to also uh, hang out in, in camaraderie as well as study. And they range from size and style, just like the campuses. Next slide, please. Uh, at community colleges, we grant priority reg. We'll allow you to register uh, really first uh, for our veterans or active duty, active duty and reservists. Um, you know, with the admissions, if you're out of state uh, with the VACA Act, you can get in state um, and not have to pay out of state fees. And then, as mentioned, many of them have veterans affairs offices and resource centers on their campuses. Next slide, please. Um, to apply, it's one application, really. If you go to any of the community college websites, you're probably going to see what their steps. And the first one is to apply, which is CC apply. It's a standard application for all our California community colleges. Uh, next slide there. Uh, Mention, you know, um, the CSUs and UCs give often priority to our community colleges. So uh, you can do the prep classes. I had a student veteran, I'll never forget, he was at my college for almost three and a half years. You're like, wow, it was a long time. He took every class he could as an engineer, took all the way to Calc 3, and when he transferred to his four-year four, four year university, he was so, he, and he would tell everybody, so far ahead of the rest of the class that had taken the same classes, but at the four-year um, at a much cheaper rate, and he saved some of his benefits and was able to really go to uh, complete his, his degree. And, 
and then there's a couple sites. I know I can go to college. It's listed here. Um, and you can always reach out. I know my contact will be there. And there's other individuals in the community college system, as well as our chancellor's office, that will uh, always refer you to the, the college you might be interested in. Next slide. Um, I guess at the end. So as mentioned, you know, Todd Stephan, faculty coordinator, uh, or counselor uh, was the coordinator. I'm more than happy, regardless, you, you don't have to be choosing Dablo Valley College, although we would love to have you here. If you're looking at a school down in San Diego, I probably know the coordinator or the certifying official to direct you to. So feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much, Todd, for what you, everything that you, uh, for being here today for the presentation, um, for the last 20 years of serving veterans and their family members um, at the colleges. I, we really, really appreciate it. And I, I know you're very passionate about what you do. And we really appreciate having thank, you in the contact and people thank, can reach out to you. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I just want to add for those in there, I'm really excited. I've been uh, I've worked closely with Cal, CalVet, but the CalTAP process I just love it because for years that was always kind of a frustration where it's like we want our, our uh, uh, California system, our CSUs, UCs, and community colleges uh, to be out there as individuals like you that have served that are getting out. And it was always a challenge. And it's, it's great to have these types of presentations. And also, as I know, many who do the uh, TAPS program, get they get you get out and you have questions. So Here's a phenomenal resource with what you guys do at Cal CalVet and CalTAP. So utilize that. Uh, it's uh, I can't stress enough. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, all right. So let's move on to uh, the Q and A section. Hi, Cherie. Cherie's on, and she's been taking note of all those questions, and she's going to go over those. Yeah, thank you so much. Great presentation, Jen and Todd, for all the wonderful information that you all provided. Um, one quick thing that I just want to note um, in regards to the GI comparison bill, just want to encourage folks when you are utilizing it, it does provide some great information, but I highly suggest that you follow up with the schools specifically that you're connecting with, just because different facts and figures may change upon um, what they're able to um, assist um, as far as like financially. So it's a, it's a great tool for um, BAH rates, but if anything, follow up directly with the schools um, that you're in, most interested in. And sure enough, there should be a counselor on site to help you um, in regards to that. Um, we, we do have a few questions um, and I'm just gonna put them out there and then either um, Jen or Todd, if you would be so kind to answer them. So the first question that we have, um, and I saved a few so that we can answer it as a group here is native Californian joined uh, the Marine Corps in California. However, they now live in Florida, have, so, have since for the seven years. Um, he has a disability rating of 100%. Uh, however, his son wants to attend school in California of 2024. How does he attain slash achieve residency once accepted into a Cal State or UC school? Um, seems to be, he seems to be getting mixed information. Um, so any, so, any answers there? So the, basically the answer is you're going to have to call the school you want to go to and ask them what the residency rules are for that school, because each school has some say, if you graduate in high school, then we'll take that. Some say that if you're using one of the one of the GI Bill, or if you're using one of those programs, you'll be charged at that the state rate. So you really have to call the school, talk to those veteran resource centers. Uh, you can easily, I mean, I was able to look up Todd on both uh, Diablo's website and also on Los Casitas website. So all I did was veterans rep and looked him up. And so, yeah, Todd, you want to talk more about that a little bit? I think, you know, you covered it perfect. It, it's definitely, you know, uh, Sorry, you get mixed messages. It's probably because they interpret some of the stuff a little different, especially for dependents coming to California. The the bottom row, and I'm not a uh, missions records. That's typically who houses a residency. Um, typically, it's a year one day to establish uh, if you're out of state for dependents for vets. DD two fourteen, uh, and so I would would support exactly what you said reach out to that school 
that they're looking to go to. And if you can't get a hold of someone in admissions, reach out to that veterans office and have them do a little bit of uh, advocacy. And then if you can't do that, more than happy, reach out to me and I can direct you to those individuals. Great, thank you. Um, so this is another question. It actually has to do more with the California benefit. So um, in regards to um, DMV um, and registration and disabled plate, do you have to have a disabled plate or can you ex exempt one vehicle without having a permanent disabled plate? Ah, uh, so I've heard, uh, I've heard both. Um, I, I would say talk to DMV. I would say talk to DMV on that one because honestly, I, I, I've heard that because I've seen, I've heard that some people don't want that on their they don't want the handicap emblem on their uh, license plate and they they choose not to do that. So um, I would talk to DMV, honestly. I would definitely talk to DMV. That's what I'm I would sorry. suggest is I'm doing so a, um, you actually might be able to ask them virtually. I know that DMV has kind of adapted and done virtual lines. So you might be able to meet with um, a DMV representative, um, wherever you may be located in California. They do have a search function on their website for whatever county you might be um, closest residing. So I would highly suggest um, speaking directly with them for that one. Um, the next question is, as an officer, has the GI Bill changed at all? Um, there is a notation that we used to not be able, we used to not be entitled to it having gone through ROTC. So I guess the question is, has the GI Bill impacted um, if somebody went to ROTC, would they be able to utilize the GI Bill? These are really good questions. Todd, can you take over on that? Yeah, I do not know that one. To be honest, uh, I would, uh, you know, I always advise individuals, especially when it's coming to approval of VA benefits uh, to uh, connect and try to contact the VA, the, what is it? The 800 number for VA, yeah. I get it. You know. 888 GI Bill 1. Call them directly. They answer the phone very easily. They can look at your account. They can see, they can answer, yes, you can use this benefit. No, you can't use this benefit. Yes, you can transfer it. No, you can't transfer it. Yeah. You have this many months. They can tell you all that stuff. So honestly, in that specific question, 888 GI Bill 1, call them up. They'll look, they'll look up your file and they'll tell you what exactly. you are eligible for. And they're, they're uh, you know, even uh, individuals that I know have seen like honorable discharge, we know they're gonna be eligible. I always, you know, you have to apply, have VA determine it because there's individuals that you may not think are eligible and they are. So I just don't know on ROTC. So um, you're, you're right. I think they'll know exactly that answer. Yeah. I went ahead and posted the GI Bill webpage, but Jen, if you don't mind typing that into the chat as well for us, the phone number, um, you can rattle it off faster than myself. So I appreciate that one. Thank you, Todd, as well. Um, we have some more, a few more questions through here. Are there any programs for dependents um seeking master's or graduate degrees i'm sorry say that one more time are there any programs for dependents um that are seeking a master's or graduate degree so so you can use your calvet fee waiver all the way up honestly and all the way down you can use you can go to school for the rest of your life if you qualify under plan b um, so the Cal, the Cal fee waiver is fantastic for that. Um, but if you want to go to private school, you're best to look for scholarships, um, militaryscholar.org. That's for military dependents. That's, um, that is one way that you can find money for scholarships. Um, schooly, uh, that's another good scholarship finder. Um, what else do you recommend, Todd? I was just writing down the ones you have. I, I I get that question, not so much at community college, but um, for dependent benefits. And the fact had a student the other day and we were looking at scholarships and I was really, I was surprised in a good way of seeing a lot more for dependents and spouses out there. Um, so the schools that you're looking at doing that program, look at their scholarships there, uh, financial aid, I mean, it may be loans, but you never know. 
um, the fee waiver you said. And then um, uh, if they have a vet center, and they should, most of them do, uh, at least in the public sector on their campus, reach out. Because I think a lot of times, and I know a lot of times, I've had dependents and spouses not utilized all the resources in the veteran center because it says veteran center and they're like oh that's just for the, the you know my mom my dad or my brother or sister but um we're always encouraging our dependents because like textbook programs all those resources that save it might not be the gi benefits va but uh, there's a lot of resources for dependents if that helps absolutely thank you uh, we have another question of what if the veteran already used up the GI bill long, long, long ago? Would you be would he still be able to apply for it or even his dependent? Um, so it sounds like this person, I don't know if they are still on, um, but if you want to get some clarification here, um, I think they probably are thinking about the GI bill and VR and E, um, is my assumption. They can um, still use VR and E but it's only 12 months that they can use it up to since they used all of their GI bill. And is that transferable to their dependent? No, no. Like BRN is to help veterans that are disabled to get placed into gainful em employment. So let's say for instance, you, uh, you're you currently, let's say uh, when you were in the military, you were a mechanic, right? But you hurt your back. So now you can't be a mechanic, but you got out of the military, um, and now you're doing administrative work. So you've got gainful employment already, but you're like, I want to go back to school and I want to get a higher education. In that, in, in, in that case, you wouldn't really, I don't think they're going to prove you for the, the VRNE program because you already have employment. It's for those that are like mechanic, hurt their back, and they're like, okay, I need to retrain. And at that point, they can apply for VRNE. You'll get a counselor. The counselor will go over what your needs are what you want to do, what you did do in the military. And then they're going to get this, they're going to pull this plan together to get you the best possible education, whether it be a certification, whether it be a degree, whatever it may be, doing tests, licenses, whatever it is, they're going to help you get that gainful employment. All right. So the next question would be um, for students utilizing Chapter 33 post 9-11 GI Bill, do they receive monthly BAH? And if so, is it the dependent rate or non-dependent rate? The BAH is the same for everyone. It's at E5 rate. I mean, the dependent rate, sorry. The uh, BAH is across the board the same, no matter whether you're, no matter who uses the GI Bill, if you transferred it over. And it's that E, I am pretty positive it's E5 um, BAH rate. Now, if you're going to school online, then it's gonna be a different amount. That GI Bill comparison tool asks you if you're gonna take, uh, it says, are you taking some classes uh, in seat or it says, or all online. If you click all online, it'll give you a separate number. For instance, I'm doing, I'm going, I'm signed up for Grand Canyon University. It just works for me. And I'm doing it completely online. My BAH would be 988 while I'm going to school. Thank you, Jen. Um, are the benefit, are there any benefits for the grandchildren of veterans? No. Has to be the direct, just, um, dependent correct yeah yeah i would say uh you know kind of going back to and i you know i repeated it over and over is they could still utilize utilize the vet centers too as dependents or even grandchildren you know uh, it's kind of a step out but i've i've always tried to assist you know the the programs that they have within the veterans program like a book program or what whatever it may be um, they just need to uh, connect, maybe even just studying in the vet center. I mean, some of those resources, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we always are out there to help everybody at, at the best rate that we can. Um, I have somebody that's asking that um, their daughter wants to attend UCLA after she graduates from high school this coming May. When should she start applying for Chapter 35? That is that is fantastic. Wow, congratulations. That's huge. That is really awesome. Um, when is the best time to, to apply for Chapter 35, Todd? Do you know that the answer to that question? You know, I don't know the exact, but I would say probably apply 
the sooner the better just because um as soon as you're approved that's the main thing right is just getting yeah. approval yeah i'm gonna go back to the phone number for that because i don't know i've never used that program so i don't know exactly so this is wait that's veterans readiness deployment there's another phone number for I, I think I it just has the there. form on there, Jen. Just has the form. So uh, what I'll do is if um, they can put that, their information in the chat and I can research that because that's a really great question. Um, it is probably not a bad idea to reach out to that if you can, if you haven't already to the Veteran Center on UCLA. I don't know that. I don't know the individuals, but uh, uh, they, they may have an opportunity to connect and let you know to, so that they're, they're aware that you're going to be submitting and, and what their process is to receive that documentation and i always think the sooner the better as soon as you get i would, approved, say, right? I would say you know what i my my biggest uh advice would be apply and yeah. then if they deny you they deny you but if they don't um then you then you have your answer there so when you're when you go through when you while you're applying they'll ask you when are you wanting to go to school yeah. so you'll put that right in there and if they deny you they'll say we're denying you because it's too early and then you have your answer pretty immediately you know what i mean and it's pretty concrete so just to go on va.gov and apply for the benefit you said they're going this coming fall is that correct is that what they said yeah yeah no do it now yeah that's Definitely. I would do it now. Yeah. I know on uh, when I was just, I used to process benefits. Any of those who did stuff very early, I was always excited about that because it just mean, meant their start of school. They wouldn't have to worry about getting their certification, their benefits. They did all that stuff way ahead. So good for, good for her and congratulations to UCLA. Yeah. I know we're short on time. We are at the 11, right up at 11 a.m., but we do have a handful of more questions. That's I can good. follow up with those folks. I just want to honor um, Todd and Jen's time today and everybody else um, still watching alongside. But if the folks that have asked questions and we have not answered them just yet, go ahead and drop your um, email us, your um, your email and be happy to follow up with you separately for those questions but we greatly appreciate all the wonderful questions that we had here um and all the present uh, information that's been presented thus far but i'm gonna go ahead and turn over to jen um so that we can close out and again people for the questions and answers we're not going to forget you please give me your send us your um email address and be happy to um, follow up with you um offline so I'm also going to put in the chat right now for those that do still have questions. Another option is I'm going to put in my business line. Uh, and I, uh, sorry, it's hard for me to type and talk at the same time, obviously. <laughs> so I'm going to put in my, uh, my phone number. You can give me a call and I can definitely no problem go over any of those questions too. So um, right here, we have the survey link. Again, we put that up there. It's actually, once we uh, sign off, the survey is going to actually even pop up. So if you don't want to scan it here and you just want to hang on for a few minutes and let us know how we're doing, let us know how we can improve. We'd really, really appreciate that, you guys. Um, I want to say thank you so much, Todd. Thank you, Cherie, for all that. There was a lot of back work there, a lot of people, a lot of questions, a lot of things going on. So I really appreciate all that hard work putting those links in there. If you guys want, while you know we're still on, you can just copy and paste everything she's got in the chat, put that in a Word document. Um, and then one more time, here is our social medias. Go to our YouTube channel. We've got, we, I think we even, I'm pretty sure, go to YouTube, go to our education playlist, see if we have a veterans readiness and employment um, a webinar on that. We might already have one on there or we might have one coming up. So sign up for our newsletter, because if you want to know more about the VRNE program, you want to know more about another the college tuition fee waiver or CalVet fee waiver, um, we'll have a webinar on that too. So look forward to our newsletters that tell you what's coming up. Go to our YouTube channel, see what we've already done, um, and just uh, stay connected with us and give us a call and share our information you know you never know when your neighbor might need a phone number you never know uh, when you're at the home depot and you bump into a veteran that needs uh, 
you know, looking into long-term care and thought that he couldn't afford it or a, a, fr a friend or family member has a, somebody that needs long-term care, you know now you have a contact with CalVet and you can give them our number and we can direct them. Um, it definitely, these benefits definitely change lives. And so I wanna say thank you again to Todd. Thank you, Cherie. Thank you to everyone who is here today um, for being advocates of the military community in the state of California. Um, and have a fantastic day. Bye, everyone. Thank you all.